It was late one evening a few weeks ago when something caught my eye in my YouTube recommended. It was a trailer for something called Dragons the Nine Realms, and the thumbnail had my heart immediately going a mile a minute, because this is simultaneously something I desperately want and my biggest fear come true. So, obviously, I watched the teaser trailer and it confirmed my suspicion. This is indeed a look into the future of the world of How to Train Your Dragon, which, as my friends can attest, is one of the first things I started speculating about as soon as the credits of the hidden world started rolling. But already I had some reservations, and the more I look into it, the more... hesitant I become. Because, as I said, this is both something I desperately want, and fear with my entire soul. So, let's go through this point by point, starting with one of the things I'm seeing overwhelmingly many people complain about, which I actually disagree with. Being upset that this isn't going to feature any of the original cast. I get it. Believe me, I do. They're dear to our hearts, and we've grown very attached to them, but their time is over. Other characters can take center stage now. Though I do agree that it could have been cool to see a spin-off series about Zephyr and Nothing. There's also been some mocking of the graphics, saying it looks like one of those rip-off movies, which is honestly an incredibly unfair comparison. You are comparing a series designed for online streaming with a movie that saw a full theatrical release. They are not going to look the same. If you actually bothered to be fair about it, you'd notice that, from what we saw in that little snippet of teaser trailer, the graphics are about on par with Race to the Edge, so y'all can just sit down about that one. That being said, I find the character designs we've been shown so far incredibly cheap and not very confidence-inspiring. Like, first of all, this guy. This guy pushed me on the playground when we were kids. <laughs> Like, yes, obviously, we're supposed to infer that he's Hiccup and Astrid's descendant, but is there any reason he has to be white just because of that? Or a he, for that matter? As much as this series has done for disabled people, it has remained woefully lacking in most other areas of representation. Which makes me even more suspicious of Mr. Wonderbread over here, because so far, it's looking like the disability rep's gonna be out the window too. Listen, I live in a Nordic country. We do not all look like this. They could easily have made the protagonist just basically anything other than the most bland white high schooler I've ever seen in my life. Anyone who complained would only be outing their own ignorance. But obviously, I don't know anything about this character yet. He might make up for it by being genuinely well written. Or, probably not, definitely not getting my hopes up, he might even be queer. Wouldn't that be something? Though, honestly, if the writers manage to make me dislike him with Jeremy Shada voice acting, I will be legitimately impressed. And then there's... this. Obviously, this is Toothless's descendant, but I'm just looking at the design like, who allowed this and why? There's already people making all kinds of theories about them being inbred because they're still black and white, instead of basically being pure light fury at this point and I'm already exhausted by it. Not least because I am so tired of everyone always wanting to find some way to make the edgiest theories possible about children's media. You like a show that was made for kids. It's okay, you can stop trying to prove your enjoyment is valid by trying to make it something that it's not now. Grow the fuck up. Either way, there are definitely traits here that the Light Fury we saw in the movies did not have, and Toothless didn't either, so there's clearly something else in here, too. Some other Fury type we haven't seen before would be my guess. Just for the genetics to work out, you know? Presumably something even more aquatic than the Light Furies. But still, there's something distinctly Uncanny Valley about this design, and I think it's the very distinctly Orca Whale-inspired everything paired with... this nose. Like, I can clearly see how they tried to mimic the shape of an Orca's face, but they didn't do it quite right. The angles are too sharp, and there's just, in general, not enough softness here, and the end result just looks... off to me. 
They tried to make it both an orca and a dog at the same time, and it just doesn't work. Yet, who knows, I might get used to it, or they might tweak it before the show releases. That being said, let's get to the things I previously worried about, regarding any story taking place in the future of this world, and how that's looking with what very little we know about the upcoming series. Number one. Burke forgot about dragons. Yeah, this is exactly what I did not want to happen. I'd hoped for, at least even if the rest of the island forgot, that some group would remain who kept the old stories alive. And hey, maybe that is the case. I don't actually know, because the series isn't out yet. But so far, what we know about the premise is not inspiring much confidence. <laughs> Number two, the cast being carbon copies of the original main crew. Uh, obviously, we don't know yet, but with these two characters, I'm hesitantly optimistic that that might not be the case. The challenge now becomes for the writers to create new characters that are interesting enough to get the fans of the original crew attached, despite their disappointment. I just really desperately don't want this to be a quick cash grab in which they rehash the story in a modern setting with some few differences here and there, because that would quite possibly be the most disappointing route for this story to take. Number three, continuing lack of representation for people of color, and poor and or no representation for queer folks. Obviously, we won't know about most of that until more trailers drop and or the full series is out, but so far... <laughs> so, on the whole, I am torn, but definitely willing to give this show a chance, and I will be going into it wanting to like it, because, as I said, I've wanted a look at Burke's far-flung future ever since the end of How to Train Your Dragon 3. What I really, really hope, though, is for there to be some old coot somewhere on Burke who's kept the knowledge of dragons alive, but no one believes them. Give me the weird old dragon grandparent. And also that even though the premise sounds like the most generic boy finds mystical or alien creature must hide it from evil corrupt scientists, we actually get something that's not just that. We've seen that trope so many times. Please, I am begging you to give us something fresh. And yeah, we all know that How to Train Your Dragon spin-offs don't exactly have the best track record. This never happened, I do not acknowledge it, I refuse, goodbye. So maybe this will end up similarly, or maybe we'll actually get a decent show out of it. We won't know until it's actually out. I do like the wind turbines, though. Really enjoy the fact that Burke is into clean energy. This is good, and I approve. One thing I don't like, though, is how some people seem to be blaming their dislike of this show and its general existence on How to Train Your Dragon 3 and its ending. Like, listen, y'all, we all knew it was gonna end with the dragons disappearing. That's how the books start. We knew this was where things were headed. Maybe some of us fell into denial right around the time the third movie was set to release, but we knew. So I just find it incredibly disingenuous to claim that somehow How to Train Your Dragon 3 goes against the rest of the series when it's literally just the conclusion we all knew we were headed for. Yes, the books and the franchise are incredibly different, but the movies are still based on the books, and the books start with the line, There were dragons when I was a boy. So, this is me. Signing off for now and waiting nervously for December 23rd. I'll see you sometime in January 2022, when I'll have collected my thoughts on whatever this ends up being. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, consider liking it and maybe subscribing. I will be back here Thursday after next. Bye!